What up guys, Carolina Jackpot time coming at you. It's Friday afternoon, it means it's April 8th, 2022, and it's time for another college football schedule preview video for the 2022 season. Yesterday we did the Tennessee Volunteers. Today we're gonna head north up I-75. Still remaining in the SEC East, so we're gonna talk about the Kentucky Wildcats and their 2022 slate. Before we get into that, please, if you're new around here, stay true around here. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. It really helps the algorithm out. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already because we drop college football content here all year long. And when the season rolls around, it really gets a little crunk around here, if you know what I'm saying. Hit the bell so you get the notifications whenever Carolina Jackpot posts a new video. The Kentucky Wildcats, uh, 10 and three in 2021. Uh, really good season, won nine uh, regular season games, and then won their bowl game, a uh, New Year's Day game against uh, Iowa out of the Big Ten, right? In the uh, Capital One Bowl, I think it was, or maybe it was the Outback Bowl. I get those confused when my Gamecocks aren't playing in them. I haven't played in them in a while. Uh, but yeah, uh, Kentucky went out there against a team that uh, played kind of a similar style to Kentucky uh, and defeated them and uh, looked pretty impressive doing it. And this year, you got a lot of that talent coming back. Don't lose a whole heck of a lot off the 2021 roster. Uh, maybe you got to find some uh, some new wide receivers. Your quarterback's coming back, Will Levis, uh, transfer from Penn State. Had a pretty decent year last season. And uh, we returned Cavassier Smoke and Chris Rodriguez, both in the uh, <clears throat> backfield. Those young men both seem like they've been there for at least 10 years. Uh, they hadn't, but it just seems that way. But look at the slate. Uh, how's Kentucky going to do this year? Last year you finished uh, up second in the SEC East, huh? right behind Georgia. Just right behind them, but you were, you were close, but really were you not so far away? You were so far away. Let's get into this slate and take a look at it. Right, you open up the season on uh, September 5th at home, September 3rd at home, uh, against Miami of Ohio, uh, a team from uh, the MAC. Um, yeah, Kentucky, I want to talk about this for just a minute, get up on a soapbox. Kentucky makes a living out of playing against teams from the MAC. I don't get it. I mean, it, yeah, it's it's a little bit more regional for you, I guess, than uh, than than you know a team from North or South Carolina, or even a team from from Georgia. Uh, but man, I mean, y'all play these teams a lot, <clears throat> and I get it. We're gonna play those mid-major, uh, the non-power five schools, but but this is uh, this is very interesting to me. Why? And, I, and I, once again, I'm not here uh, to disparage Kentucky at all, okay? I'm, I'm just not. I'm not here to, uh, to grind my gears, uh, and this really has no effect on me, but I don't understand why they do not schedule another Power 5 opponent besides Louisville, which is their, their rivalry by Bo Ree game, right? The Commonwealth Cup. I think it's called, why do they not, uh, or the Governor's Cup, maybe. Maybe even Virginia and Virginia Tech's Commonwealth. Anyway, I don't understand why don't you schedule uh, another Power 5 uh, opponent. Sometimes, sometimes, I'm not saying do it every year, because nobody does that. Nobody does that every year. But, I mean, I mean, we've seen, you know, South Carolina plays Clemson every year. Well, South Carolina has played North Carolina, North Carolina State opened up the seasons. They did it in like 2013, 15, 17, 19. Had done it the past couple of years, but we'd play. South Carolina has uh, Virginia Tech on the schedule uh, to open up this season uh, in a couple of years. Right? South Carolina's got a home and home with Miami coming up uh, in three or four years down the road. So, you know, everybody else is kind of doing it. And no, we're not doing it every year. South Carolina doesn't do it this year. Last year, Clemson and Georgia played. Clemson doesn't play uh, an out-of-conference 
Power Five team. And Clemson was doing it. They were playing uh, playing Auburn a couple times, right? Played Texas A&M a couple times. Uh, Tennessee uh, is doing it now. You know, a game against Pittsburgh. Now their main rivals are in the SEC, so I get that. But I don't understand what the deal is with Kentucky. Uh, Louisville is not like it, it, it's not like they're perennially a strong uh, opponent. Let's just say. Yeah, I had a few good years there with Lamar Jackson, but to be quite frank with you. Um, Kentucky needs to do a little better. I went back and dug and dug and dug and dug and dug and dug, and dug, dug some more so I could dug no more. I went all the way back to 2006. Kentucky has not played a non-conference Power 5 team other than Louisville since at least that time. And I don't know how far back it actually goes. I wasn't able to research it any further uh, due to time constraints, but I am going to find out the answer to that question. And uh, and I bet you, I'm willing to bet you, it's before Kentucky and Louisville start playing every year. I, I'm willing to bet it goes back that far. But anyway, it makes no sense to me. You have regional teams that you could play uh, every so often. I mean, I'd like to see a Kentucky versus West Virginia. I'd like to see, you know, maybe Kentucky play Virginia Tech. You know, that's reasonably close. Kentucky play Virginia. You know, that, that, that's reasonably uh, close as well. And, I mean, there's a slew of other teams out there. You could even venture out uh, the Big Ten, like Kentucky versus uh, Northwestern or Indiana. There you go. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. But, you know, do you think? Uh, we've talked about that enough. So that's your home home opener. Uh, then Kentucky goes on the road uh, the next week uh, to Florida, September 12th. Uh, you you head to the swamp, and, and this will be uncharted uh, uncharted waters. I believe Kentucky will probably be favored in this game. I believe that Kentucky uh, should be favored in this game. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess it kind of depends on uh, how Florida does uh, in in their opening matchup. They open the season at home against Utah. Um, and I don't think that's going to go very well for them. Uh, I just don't think that's going to go very well for Florida. Uh, that'll have a lot of bearing on how that one goes. You know, we know that, that Kentucky's probably going to roll over Miami of Ohio. How will Florida do? That's probably going to set the tone for, for how this game will be as far as the Vegas line goes. But I think Kentucky's definitely the better team of the two. Uh, next week, you're at home against uh, Youngstown State. FCS team, been a decent FCS team at, at one point in time. I don't really know if they are uh, at this point in time or not. Uh, you know, the Penguins, uh, we're not going to talk too much about that. The Texas roll there again. I mean, you could be going 3 0 here into the next matchup against, guess what? Uh, another MAC team, Northern Illinois. You, know, you got them at home. And then we get back into the conference slate. Go on the road to take on Ole Miss uh, on September 24th. That is going to be uh, a tough game. And that's, um, you know, if Kentucky can go on the road and win that game, uh, you're, you're really, 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 really starting to establish yourself as being kind of legit. As being kind of legit. I, I don't know. I, I, I personally don't think you do, though. Yeah, I know uh, Ole Miss lost some talent, but... I think that uh, old Lane Train's got some tricks up his sleeve there. I think they're going to be okay. I think he's he's building a winner there. I mean, he's already built a winner uh, in just a couple of seasons, and I, I definitely think he's going to keep it going. Uh, so I, that that's going to be a tough game for you. Think he doesn't generally play very well in the state of Mississippi either. Next week, you're at home against my Gamecocks. Um, um, I've already said it once. I'll tell you again. These, this is a game. South Carolina's got to start winning these games. Now, we've got to start beating Kentucky uh, at some point in time if we're going to ever uh, seriously, uh, you know, I mean, we'll not get over the hump because we haven't even started yet. If we're going to start getting over the hump, we've got to uh, start beating teams like Kentucky. And uh, 
unfortunately for uh, Gamecocks, fortunately for Kentucky, South Carolina, just, as a rule, generally doesn't play well in Lexington. South Carolina didn't play well in Lexington when we had good teams with Steve Spurrier. Now, when we were winning, you know, 10, 11 ball games a year, South Carolina would go to Kentucky and have uh, a, a very rough time. And I, you've heard me say it before, uh, South Carolina went on the road the week after they upset number one Alabama back in 2010. They go on the road to Lexington the next week against a 2-10 and 10 Kentucky team coached by Joker Phillips and lose. You know, so, you know, our luck in Lexington is not great. And, you know, I, you know I mean, Kentucky's just a better football program right now. I mean, they just are. I mean, they're better. I mean, they're more solid on the lines of scrimmage. And the coaching's better right now. And, and South Carolina fans don't want to hear that, uh, but facts are facts. You know, and, and there's no reason to – and there's no reason to, to hate or dislike Kentucky for it. I mean, that's not Kentucky's fault that we sucked for the past however many years – seven, eight years in a row. Not their fault that we've been terrible. It's not their fault at all. So, uh, this is a game, you know, Kentucky would probably be favored here. You know, regardless of the outcome of the game against Ole Miss, whether Kentucky goes on the road and, and, and wins or whether they go on the road with a close one or whether they kind of get blown out, still think they'd probably be favored over the Gamecocks at home unless South Carolina just goes on some – some kind of amazing pant shitting run to start the season. No, I don't see that happening. I don't see us being favored there. The next week, you're at home against Mississippi State. Kentucky uh, generally hadn't played real great against Mississippi State either. Um, at home, you're much better than you are on the road. So that's a good spot for Kentucky coming off the South Carolina game to take on uh, the Bulldogs there. And uh, they look to be kind of. Uh, <laughs> rebuilding that's probably going to be either the worst or the second from worst team in the uh, SEC West. You got a pretty good draw as far as your uh, crossover opponent every year in, in Mississippi State because they're down more often than they're up. So you're off the next week and uh, it, it comes at a good time. You got to go on the road take on Tennessee on uh, October 29th right before Halloween taking on the ball. You know, you lost to them last year at home. And, and that, you know, at 45-40, I think it was, real high-scoring game. And, uh, you know, it just continues that same old trend of, you know, Tennessee just have average teams or even sometimes below-average teams. And Kentucky have really good teams. But for some reason, Tennessee's got your number. I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, but you lost that game. Uh, I, I think this, we got to think this is a revenge matchup here. Uh, if you've got um, a, a fierce rival inside the conference, this is it. Um, so that's going to be a huge game uh, for both teams. Uh, you know, I think both teams uh, think that they're slugging it out for uh, second place behind the Georgia Bulldogs in the SEC East. Well, South Carolina Gamecocks have got something to say about that. I think the Florida Gators may have something to say about that as well. And maybe the Missouri Tigers have something to say about that as well. And speaking of the Missouri Tigers, you play them the next week. You're on the road uh, in the fake Columbia, Missouri. The, uh, the cold, nasty, wintry weather, one that nobody really cares about. And, you know, y'all played them last year. You beat them at home in a, <coughs> a pretty good game. <coughs> pretty... Uh, Back and forth game where you won 35 uh, 28. And, you know, that was. Okay. Quite frankly, Mizzou looked better in that game than they did almost all year long. We saw that game. That was uh, week two, I think. And I was like, oh my God, man. I'm like, God, both these teams are going to be hell. And uh, they were. Well, I mean, the Gamecock still ended up losing to both of them. The Missouri loss was inexcusable. Uh, the Kentucky loss at home really was inexcusable as well. South kind of, you know, blew that game with multiple opportunities to, uh, to, 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 to pull ahead there in the second half. Uh, penalties, uh, shot themselves in the foot, turnovers, uh, just really poor play uh, in the second half. Well, really poor play in the first half. Second half, they came out, played a lot better. 
to begin the half, and then they go back into the, all this penalty and, and turnover bullshit. And, um, and there we go. That gas has gone down to 343 a gallon here in upstate South Kakalagi. Thanks, Sleepy Joe. Anyway, uh, so that'll be uh, that'll be a tough game for Kentucky. Uh, that'll be a tough game for Mizzou. I think still in the running uh, for possibly the services of Eli, uh, Eli Drake. What's JT Daniels at quarterback? Maybe now, if they can get JT Daniels at quarterback with this Burton kid they got coming in to play wide receiver with some of the other talent they got, uh, Missouri will be a very very uh, dangerous team that uh, many folks overlook. Uh, without uh, Jason Daniels coming in or, or one of those young quarterbacks that got really stepping up and, and surprising a lot of people, I don't look for Missouri to be really good this year. Now, Eli Drinkwitz is recruiting at a very, um, I don't to say he's recruiting at a high, high level, but he's recruiting right now at a higher level than Mizzou has really recruited at ever. I mean, they may have had, you know, a top 10 class here or there, but it's not generally the norm. Uh, I think Eli's pulled in a couple of really good recruiting classes. It's going to start paying dividends on the field. I bet you, I'm not sure if this is the year or not. Uh, you know, he really, really needs a quarterback bad because those guys that um, he was trotting out there last year after um, the guy that I kind of fell in love with, kind of a folk hero, uh, Connor uh, Bedazzled Sack, they called him. That guy just, I don't know what happened to him. Uh, just had an awful year. I think it got in his psyche a little bit, and uh, he never really recovered the entire season. And he uh, just uh, kind of just turned into a big ball of dust in one way. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be a, that'll be an interesting matchup there. Uh, then the, the next week, you're at home <clears throat> against Georgia. No, but left one out here. They're home against Vanderbilt the next week. I, I don't know. What can you say? Uh, huge talent gap here between both teams. Gap in talent, gap in coaching, gap in uh, everything, and probably gap on the scoreboard, too. Uh, Kentucky should roll in this game. They should roll, I say. But Kentucky has played games against uh, Vanderbilt uh, the past years have been closer than probably what they should have been. Closer um, than what the, uh, the the talent, the record uh, of the two teams would indicate that those games would be. That, I think you actually lost to uh, Vanderbilt a few years ago, maybe in 2019, I think it was. Don't lie and say you didn't do it. I think you done it. I think you did. I think you lost to Vanderbilt. I wouldn't know my team hadn't done that in a while. Anyway, uh, Georgia, at home the next week. Uh, will this be for... Uh, the SEC East. Uh, it could be. It could be. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, if it is, uh, you're not winning it. I, I just really don't see you winning it. Uh, there's just that big of a gap right now between Georgia uh, and the rest of the pack, you know, talent-wise and coaching-wise. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I could see them uh, running through the regular season undefeated again. Um I don't say unfortunately. I mean, they've earned it. I mean, it's not like they just one day, oh, we just looked up and uh, we started winning all of our games. They've built the thing. Kirby Smart's built the thing. Uh, you know, he's recruited really well, progressively better every year. And, um, you know, he's assembled a hell of a coaching staff. You know, minus uh, that dunce who wears glasses that uh, was a special teams coach. Used to coach... Uh, somebody I know's team. Anyway, uh, they're really good, and uh, beating them is going to be a real tall order for you. At home, I could see this game being closer than last year's was. I don't know if uh, beating them is in the cards for you. Speaking of in the cards, your rivalry game is next. Last uh, Saturday in November, uh, the Louisville Cardinals at home and Kentucky's owned them uh, pretty much of late. And Louisville, eh, you, know, you know, showed some flashes uh, of being a really good team when uh, Lamar Jackson was there. Um, but, uh, you know, the past few years, yeah, yeah, not so much. Not too, uh, not too impressive. 
Uh, you know, always uh, going to be kind of a high-scoring team. Always going to be a fun team to watch uh, when you're waiting for something else to come on. But uh, really, uh, never a threat to do um, a whole heck of a lot. Uh, just because, you know, they, they, they don't play defense. And they're not going to play defense. Uh, I've never, Louisville Cardinals football and the word defense has never just really been uttered uh, in the same sentence in a positive light, I don't think, ever. So there's that. I mean, what do you think about that? What do you think about the schedule this year? How do you think Kentucky will do? You think they'll win uh, double digits again? You think they'll challenge Georgia for the SEC East again? Or do you think it'll be time for Tennessee to do it? Or do you think somebody else will step up and do it? What do you, why, why does Kentucky never play a Power 5 team besides Louisville out of conference? Why? I want to know that. And if you know the answer to the last team that they played besides Louisville uh, out of conference that was in the Power 5, uh, tell me who it is because uh, I would love to know. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit it with a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, like I said. I'll see you guys next video. Appreciate you watching. Peace. I'm out of here. Go Gamecocks and uh, go Coach a Beamer. Ah, ah, ah. Woo, baby. I said, woo, baby.